Hello and welcome to our third part of our TDX Copter mini-series How does our quadcopter work? Now if you haven't seen the other two parts, they are awesome, check them out, they are linked there and there and let's get to it. So this part is about the software of the graphical user interface. Now it's programmed with LabVIEW and it runs on any computer. So this is the graphical user interface, it has a lot of buttons and stuff and let's see how it behaves when we start up the quadcopter and I plug in the battery now the Windows CE will start and our program and as you can see it directly connected to our user interface and we have here the quadcopter orientation and everything working just fine so you can see here there is a little 3D model of the quadcopter, so if we turn it like this, you can see it's moving accordingly. The first part is this blue box here. Now this displays strings which are sent from the quadcopter to tell us, for example, what its status is, what it's currently doing, or if it has a question. And Right now it says checking if remote is available, so this is a task it's done, so we know what it, that it was checking for the remote. And we can also send commands, so we can send kill commands to kill the program or just to stop it, or we can send parameters and stuff. Now the box below, this is for the joystick, so we can attach a joystick to the computer and this is just a little graph which shows the stick position then there is the thrust and the rotation so this is um, thrust and yaw and right below is the battery voltage this is updated about every second and it's currently at 11.7 volts then we have our 3D model of the quadcopter uh, below are the yaw, pitch and roll values and this gets updated about 50 times per second so again if I move the quad up we, we, can, we can see that it's working quite fast so we can see it a bit better like this and there is also the rotation this is a mix of the gyroscope in the z-axis and the compass sensor right below we have our data output. So this is a plot of the gyro values right now and I put the quadcopter on the table again so they are zero more or less. Now if now if I hit on the table you see there is a big bump. Also if I move it around you can see the different axes. So this X, Y and Z axis. You can also determine how many um, steps you want to see of the signal, so if I say 100 then it's, it's quite fast, so we can see all the data very fast and if I say 1000, we say, see all the, the last 1000 um, plots so all the data is stored, no data gets lost so right now we see the last 1000 values now we also have different plots, so we, this is plot 1, we have plot 2, this is displaying something else and this is the, the remote control here which is downstairs currently so this is the most interesting one now this plot we can save all the data to an excel file for later analysis and as I said everything is stored right now and then we can choose a folder, choose a name and save it. Up here we have the current values of the plot. Now the upper line, this is the, the raw values and the, down, the, the lower line is an average of the plot. So if we measure just the signal we can get a nice value without all these hiccups. And the, the top control here is to start and stop the control loop so we can go ahead and stop it and then start it again 
So we are back up and running. So this was quite fast. You can see here the automatic offset calibration. So these are the gyro values. And after a few seconds it automatically calibrated themselves. And we are back to zero again. Also you will see here the, um, the battery voltage graph. So this is very interesting because when we're running the motors the voltage drops and after, after the flight it goes up again. And like this we can see the, the lowest point. So because this is also what counts. It doesn't matter if the voltage is afterwards 11 volts again if it was 9 volts before. Well, this is an, easy, uh, is an extreme example, but you get the idea. Now to the right, we have all our para parameters. If you saw the earlier videos, I explained to you um, what they mean to us and where they are stored. So they are stored on the quadcopter in text file, also in the RAM, and now on this computer. So we can press Get All Settings. Also you can see here the commands. Now it asks the quadcopter for every setting and updates them to the table. So here are all the settings. Now if I want to, for example, I want to the PID of the um, X axis. I want to change the P value. So I can go ahead and change it plus 0 0.5. Also I want to change the proportional part of the Y axis, 1.6. And you can see it immediately updates the values to the right. So this is, it make marks it them with an X if the value has changed. So I can also change this guy, then it has an X. So now we know all the values that have changed and we can say save changed values only. And then we go ahead and save send all the changed values. Now we can also save those parameters to a file and this file is located on the TDX copter. So what we did right now is all these parameters are now saved on the quadcopter on a text file. Now if, if we restart the quadcopter it automatically reads the text file and we have the last parameter set. We can also load from text file so if we changed stuff and in the RAM and we want to get the default configuration back we say just load from file and the quadcopter will load the file. Now, on the right, we have distance to target. This is the GPS stuff, so um, we know our difference, um, how, how many meters we are away from our uh, target coordinates and the angle to the target. And with those two values, we can calculate the angle and the X and Y correction we have to do on the motors. This graph also displays these two corrections. Now there is no GPS attached right now, so these values are zero because we're inside and we don't get the good fix anyway. Down here, this is the height control. So we have the difference and our goal height. So it's right now it's 9,999, but we can set it to a, a more intelligent value and it will tell us the current difference. And then we have the the option to hold this height, stop it, and to add or subtract one meter of the height, so we can adjust the height with those two buttons. Last but not least, we have the GPS, so we can uh, turn it on and off. This is important for testing. We are right now developing and making it better, and it's important if our code fails, we can just press the off button and all the GPS corrections will be set to zero so we only have the the normal control loop running and this communication works either over the XP so we have to select the port here or over UDP connection for the UDP connection we need the IP address of the quadcopter now let's show you the hardware part so um, we select here the COM port of the XP and this is um, connected to the USB port of the quadcopter. This is the XP module. There's a range of 1.6 kilometers. Supposedly we didn't test it actually but uh, we flew quite far away and we had quite a good connection. 
and here is the quadcopter. There, down here, you can see the XP module of the quadcopter itself. You can see we can take it away, and we have all the remote capability. So we have really, we can really do anything from here. And if we need new commands, we can just implement them. Now the GUI itself. This might might be interesting as well. So I'll quickly show you how it works. So now we press kill. This really stops everything. This stops the whole quadcopter. And it will tell us, well, quadcopter is shutting down. Bye bye. And then we can exit the graphical user interface. And I won't show you everything. You can download the code and look at it yourself. But the most important thing is um, there is the quadcopter GUI. So this is the the graphic stuff. So if we go behind it, this is this is the code, the actual code. So it's quite simple. It has just two loops. So this is the upper loop. This um, does changes to the values on the on the display. So it changes uh, values and parameters. And the lower loop it will listen for changes. So if I press a button, this gets executed. And we have all the, the buttons and stuff. Every button does something else. And you see the code is very simple. There is only like one block inside here. And this block, this is a part of a consumer producer loop. So um, the user interface is actually divided into two parts, the consumer and the producer, and this two times. So we have the graphics here. And if we press a button, it will send a string what to do to our processing part. And this has no user interface, but it has the code. And it's also quite simple, it's just just one loop. But the good thing is that it's uh, that it's two processes that, that are separated. So in case we lo lose connection or there is a hardware problem or a bug, we still can stop the graphical user interface or do um, some tasks. Also, we can queue the tasks up and we don't have to worry about the hardware. That's why uh, we separated this and this is also common practice with LabVIEW graphical user interfaces. So here you can see all the commands we can set. So we can say um, send UDP or start UDP, send XP and the send stuff happens here so if there is stuff it will be sent to the to the XP module. Now, if we we when we receive stuff, this happens. Um, read here, so this is the case for receive. When we receive stuff, it gets analyzed. So we have a little machine here. We can input our command, and then it will decrypt it and part it into a name and the data. So we can write, for example, plot double point, a double point, 77, 32, 45, and it will decrypt it into the name plot and into the values in an array. Yeah, and then it will send it to our graphical user interface and we can display it here. And also do stuff like edit it or save it or whatever. So this is quite neat and if we have to add another command we just add it to the analyze string thingy and we are good to go. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment if you have any questions. Also if you want to see more we are happy to talk about this stuff. It's, it's an interesting project and yeah if you liked the video press the thumbs up. <laughs>